Hi guys, it is another gray, dreary day, Sunday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on, uh, that will be Sunday, October 10th, and I have a lot on my plate today. I thought I was not going to be able to bring you a sermon, so I want to send out a big thank you to my old uh, buddy who I've never spoken to, Rob Milkarski, uh, showing up again, his excellent website, undenial.com. Uh, anybody who's not signed up to Rob's website, undenial, needs to change that. But uh, what Rob is doing this week is kind of handing over to his, co his column to uh, this fellow, I think, I think he's referenced before named AJ. Don't think AJ is Alex Jones. Uh, I guarantee you, particularly this. Uh, speaking of Alex Jones, uh, Alex Jones calls the author of today's sermon Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom. So uh, that would be an an ecologist based right in Austin, Texas at the University of Texas named Eric Pianca. And I guess Eric Pianca, we're going back to 2019, this book went totally under my radar, joined by another ecologist named Laurie Vitt. I don't know anything about Laurie. Now, Eric Pianca, <laughs> I had the pleasure of uh, actually interviewing this man in person. Uh, he was kind enough to invite me to his office in, uh, at the University of Texas. And so I spent an hour, actually a couple of hours, with Dr. Doom interviewing him a couple of years ago. And at the end of the interview, he said, his question to me was, what was that? As I was getting, uh, as I was getting my things together to leave his office, and I didn't understand his question, and I and I said, "What do you mean? What was that?" And he said, "Sam, that was the single worst interview I have ever had. The guy lit into me that I was some, uh, I don't know, fourth grade level journalist that I had no clue about anything about uh, collapse or anything, and I basically needed to go back to elementary school. Uh, I got the biggest tongue lashing from, <laughs> from any doomer, uh, so I assured uh, Dr. Doom that I would not embarrass him or me by running the interview, so I just erased it. So uh, <laughs> I must say uh, I, I have that, that is my personal experience with Dr. Doom, the ecologist uh, <laughs> Eric Pianca. But anyway, so right about the time I was interviewing him, maybe, he, maybe it was when he was bringing this book out, that might have been the reason I was there. So in 2019, he and uh, Laurie Vitt wrote this book, which I need to read, Our One and Only Spaceship, Denial, Delusion, and the Population Crisis. And uh, so uh, Rob Milkarski uh, basically turning me on to this book through AJ, whoever AJ is. So you just go over uh, to Barnes & Noble in this case, and uh, instead of just breaking into the book, because as I say, I really don't even have time to be doing this sermon, we're just going to read a little bit from uh, kind of the Barnes & Noble site. So this is the publisher's summary of the of uh, this book, probably written by the authors. Publisher summary: Ecologist Eric 
Pianca from the University of Texas and Laurie J. Vitt from the University of Oklahoma provide a scientific summary of the overpopulation crisis facing humanity and itemize, it, itemize its many consequences, including climate change, parentheses, global warming, conservation biology, economic systems, energy and resource shortages, human instincts, immigration conflicts, politics, pollution, poverty, technological problems, and of course, solutions needed. Their underlying thesis is that denial and delusion work synergistically to undermine our ability to confront these serious issues un unless we undertake proactive measures now. Overpopulation and its impact on resource competition and climate change will ultimately lead to the collapse of civilization. There you go. So as I say, I'm 99% sure that the authors wrote that. But So this is the author's overview, kind of like the, <clears throat> I guess, like the prologue to the book, summing it up. So we're just going to read this for our uh, sermon today. Take it away. Paul and Laurie. <clears throat> In Road to Survival, 70 years ago, William Voigt tried to call attention to the human overpopulation crisis, but failed. Paul Ehrlich raised the issue again 20 years later, but was also widely ignored. We wish to reopen this long overdue and much needed discussion about population, a toxic topic that politicians globally avoid. <clears throat> we have written a book, Our One and Only Spaceship, Denial, Delusion, and the Population Crisis. We are two well-known ecologist, blah, blah, blah. Okay. <clears throat> Our book is based on a great deal of research that we have conducted into the topic on a course that, uh, that Pianca taught, amazingly, uh, at the University of Texas. I can, I can, I, I was actually shocked that the University of Texas uh, would even hire this guy. Uh, amazing. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> Robert Jensen, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, which is, uh, now I have interviewed Robert Jensen twice. You can find my interviews with him on, at, le at least Robert Jensen uh, did not run me out of his office after berating me. All right, <clears throat> getting back to Rod and Laurie. <clears throat> We have edited and written books together, both scientific and semi-popular. Using fact-based analyses, we make the case that human population size and growth is the greatest threat to human survival, well, and the survival of every other species of earthling we share the planet with. I guess that's implied. Yeah, so with that one, all right. Human population size and growth is the greatest threat to human survival and that most, if not every, major global problem, including the spread of AIDS and other communicable diseases, this came out in the fall of 2019, wars and other conflicts, climate change, in particular global warming, food, water, and energy shortages, poverty, political unrest, pollution, extinctions, etc. are all direct results of overpopulation. Hmm, this is real rocket science. Our birth rate 
far exceeds our death rate, and the current global population of 7.7 .7 billion in itself is unsustainable, even without additional growth. This has put us on a collision course with disaster. It is perilous to remain in denial about all of the threats emanating from overpopulation. As we become ever more and more desperate in trying to provide resources necessary to meet critical demands, our environmental problems will only worsen as we continue to deregulate, thus allowing increased exploitation of dwindling natural resources. The thin skin of life on our planet is seriously threatened by the action of a single species. Can you guess which one? Homo sapiens. Remarkably, even with our putative, <laughs> our putative high intelligence, we don't seem to be able to even admit that the problem is population, such that discussions can begin on how to stop <coughs> population growth. One thing is certain. It must and will stop. Either we can do it through a series of logical steps, parentheses, educating the public, coming up with a global plan, and implementing the plan, close of parentheses. This is why Alex Jones calls, uh, calls, uh, prof calls Professor Pianca Dr. Doom. Uh, you know, Alex Jones claimed, you know, obviously this guy is a eugenicist. He's working for the New World Order's depopulation agenda, all the usual right-wing crap from the uh, Alex Jones crowd. That's, that's what Alex Jones... Alex has uh, <clears throat> several rants on this man. Okay. Or it, meaning the the end of population growth will occur as the result of a combination of wars over resources, spread of infectious diseases, or even famine. Such a discussion will have a greater impact on human survival than any of the many news stories currently dominating our media. <clears throat> Overpopulation has only one outcome, and we have all seen it. <clears throat> when mold takes over an orange, unlike mold growing on an orange, we do not have another orange to which we can send our offspring. There is no planet B. We are fully aware that discussions on population are politically incorrect and will be extremely sensitive to many people, especially religious groups, who take up arms in, in response to any discussion to limit reproduction. The ultimate biological reason for this response is simply that our genes control much of what we do and reproduction is the currency of future generations. A more proximate reason is simply that our hormonal systems kick in when we reach puberty and all reason is washed away in the maelstrom of hormonal activity pushing us to reproduce. We must do something ignoring our pressing problem and expecting it to go away is like hoping in vain 
to win the Mega Lottery. <laughs> and that is uh, how they kick off our one and only Spaceship Earth. So AJ, uh, not exactly sure. Again, that is not Alex Jones. Uh, he does his review. I'm just going to pick a little bit out of uh, out of AJ's review. <clears throat> uh, I overall liked this book. My feeling is that it is somewhat like Tom Murphy's book. Then we go and that that could be another uh, sermon for another day like Tom Murphy's book and was intended for an intro college course in ecology and sustainability without the math. <clears throat> there is some hope in this book, some hope in this book, quoting uh, the hopium probably at the very end. Quote, this generation will be the last with decision-making powers to save our spaceship for all future Earthlings, including human beings. The problem can, e can be easily framed in three words. Population, population, and population. Close quote. Back to AJ, human civilization is in overshoot and that we in the West are living far beyond the carrying capacity of the planet is covered in detail here, so the problem is both overshoot and population. There is an acknowledgement that denial and optimism bias are part of our problem. But I think that the authors are also in a little denial. Quoting again, uh, probably towards the end of the book. <clears throat> if humans are to survive into the next century, we need to reduce population growth, convert to renewable energy sources, use much less energy overall, and develop a plan for the future that is based on fact and not on fiction." Close quote. Back to AJ. Their opinion is that we can maintain much of our technology through the green tech transition and slowly reduce population with education and enlightenment. I don't know if they really believe this or, like Tom Murphy, need to give their students something positive to live for in the face of our depressing predicament. Which is my guess. Uh, I honestly don't know either. You know, when I was interviewing Paul Ehrlich or anybody else talking about, uh, you know, empowering women. It's empowering women is going, uh, I, I mean, I'm all for empowering women, okay? Uh, don't get me wrong, but come on, guys. Uh, but I'm going, I'm just going to wrap it up here because I have to go make a big uh, batch of homegrown salsa for some upcoming guests. And uh, I will sheepishly admit, guys, this was not the sermon I, uh, I, I really wanted to have. So I'm going to go look elsewhere in the Doomosphere for another Sunday sermon. <coughs> Enough said. Bye, guys.